You do what you want. As a sub, would you agree with that? You know, this last point is it cannot be under and overemphasized. I mean, under that before you get into marriage, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't talk about, well, what are you actually getting yourself into? What is the purpose of this? Mm -hmm. In the course of the nikah ceremony, the Holy Prophet Muhammad saw some selected certain verses of the Holy Quran for a reason that in that moment where two people are about to make a life commitment, mm -hmm. ideally, they need to understand it cannot be based just on love. So you you hear the word over and over, ittaqullah, fear Allah. Fear Allah does not just mean that we have some fear of some grand being going to destroy us, means that we have another relationship in everything else we do. That is a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that is a strong relationship, He is overlooking our affairs and He's blessing them. So that where there are struggles, because as we say nowadays, the love is gone, I don't feel it anymore, or you're not the same person you used to be, or we have outgrown each other. At that moment, a person begins to realize, this is a human being, I'm a human being. They're changing, I'm changing. They were not supposed to be always the same. And let me remember that they are still related to God and so am I. That carries a relationship forward. So you do not need to start just on the premise that I must love you before I like you and, and, and respect you and appreciate you and see some good in you. I can love you as one of God's creation and build from there and, and find love and maybe lose love and find it again. And that's going to be for every single relationship you'll ever have in life. Okay. You mentioned the concerns of, of uh, arranged marriage and just yeah. to go, go back to it. Sometimes the youngsters can have a justifiable aversion to it. Mm -hmm. And I would say the justifiable aversion is purely because of the misconceptions that they see amongst them which is why it becomes a forced marriage if there has been no consultation, if the marriage has been done for economic reasons as a one-way ticket to the West, mm. if it's been to maintain some family heirloom or some uh, uh, family legacies, if they are varying reasons that are not righteous in their first instance, they are not for the sanctity of those two individuals, yeah. they are some third or fourth reason, it's no wonder that youngsters will turn around and say, well, this system of arranged marriage is not a good system because the examples that they see are far from pious yep. and they're far from righteous. Okay. And we can't deny the fact that that exists. Uh, we're just going to take a, a short break now. Um, but join us after the break where we'll be discussing some more of these issues. You know, how do you find the right person and uh, how do you actually deal with some of the um, family pressures that come into it as well with an arranged marriage? So join us. We're going to be back after this short break. वक्त था वक्त मसीहा न किसी और का वक्त वक्त था वक्त मसीहा न किसी और का वक्त मैं नाता तो कोई और ही आया होता मैं नाता तो कोई और ही आया होता जिंदाबाद जिंदाबाद अहमदियत जिंदाबाद अहमदियत जिंदाबाद अहमदियत जिंदाबाद अहमदियत जिंदाबाद अहमदियत जिंदाबाद वेलकम बैक टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग मैरिज एंड अर्लियर ऑन इन द प्रोग्राम वी वर लुकिंग एट द इस्लामिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ मैरिज so if you've decided you want to get married, you know, how do you find that right person? And when's the right age to get married? That's what we'll be discussing in this part of the program. As Zanif Saab, let me come to you first. When do you think is the right age to get married? The age will depend somewhat on the societies. Right. They can never be in a universal religion, such a hard and fast rule that, okay, at 23, everybody, men, you're, you're going to sign up, and women, 20, you're going to sign in. That is not how these things work. There, there must be a, a, a balance and some flexibility, but keeping in view, as far as I can see, some basic facts. Number one, women tend to mature faster than men. Men may not want to admit that, but yes, it's the fact. If you look at it, girls are reaching the point where they're ready to marry, mentally, emotionally, 
spiritually prior to a man. So the ages of girls in marriage should be somewhat younger in societies than the ages of men. Mm -hmm. Secondly, their biological clock. They have to produce children, and science has shown that the earlier they do that, the better for that child, for that mother. I'm married, I know. The younger my wife was, the healthier our children were as well. It happens. And, and lastly, uh, th there are some standards you can look at in Islam that uh, our khulafa have been recommending for both sexes, men and women, to marry as young as possible because the flexibility of a couple is in earlier young ages. You know, is this a natural ability to compromise and, and to get along with someone else. As you get older, you get f kind of fixed in your ways and set in your ways and it creates its own little uh, I mean, that struggles. Was that earlier on, that if you marry earlier, then you can actually grow and develop you know, with, with that person. Yes. So what kind of guidance does Islam give us in finding a partner? Well, uh, first of all, I have to refer to a hadith narrated by Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he has said, Tunkahul mar'atu le arba'in le maaliha wa le hasbiha wa le jamaliha wa le deeniha fasfur bi zati deeni taribati adaka If I can, you help me out if I lose my word in some place. Uh, a girl is uh, chosen as a bride on the basis of four things. Sometimes a groom is having uh, her family into consideration and then sometimes it is the wealth she uh, holds and sometimes it is the beauty she contains. But some of the intelligent boys, they go for the piety and the religious background of the lady. And this is the true secret of your success, according to Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the correct way of uh, pinpointing your partner for lifelong. And if I come to this point, when we are young, you are having a colorful life, a life full of dreams to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But the experience shows that these things do not last long. The beauty and the colors and all the attractions, physical ones, and he was mentioning the uh, bumpy hormones always mm -hmm. jumping. These are to be contained, as I mentioned earlier. The regulations all are to make our life healthier, better, happier. So you have to pinpoint on piety and religious background of the lady if you want to make a good choice. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, what happens if your parents do decide on someone and you don't like them? You have a genuine excuse. How, how do you balance that out with your parents? Because obviously you have to respect your parents' yes. decision. I, but how do you I, balance I that out? I hope the relationship with a youngster and his parents or her parents is so relaxed and free and genuinely father to son mm. that you can openly express your desires and your concerns to your, your parents. And ideally, a parent, I would hope, uh, although my children are very young, yeah. a parent would be able to read into his son as to, as to what his uh, uh, ideals are, what his concerns are. And I would also hope that no parent would want to throw their child into a sort of pit of fire. Admittedly, that does happen when things are not properly discussed and properly engaged with. Okay.